Hi, Chef Mike with Tupperware, and today I'm going to make Southwest Turkey Chili in our microwave pressure cooker. 25 minutes from zero to chili, and it is delicious, easy, and it's a dump recipe, which makes it even easier. So the, let me tell you a bit about the pressure cooker. It's completely safe because there are many safety features built in. For example, this silicone gasket prevents the pressure cooker from overpressurizing. And in the event that the pressure release valve didn't work, this would collapse into the pressure cooker and prevent any further pressurization. So you're not going to have an explosion. It's not going to blow up your microwave. That's one of the features. Another is the pressure release valve. So as the pressure builds up, this allows the steam to escape. This is the pressure indicator valve. It works kind of like a butterball turkey so that when this becomes pressurized, it will pop up and that lets you know that the pressure cooker is at full pressure and when you take it out of the microwave, it also means don't touch, don't open until I drop and it will fall automatically when it has been depressurized. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do for our chili, I don't know about you, but I love onions and garlic in my chili. So I'm gonna use our Power Chef to chop my garlic and onions. And I wanna mention that the blades on this are ridiculously sharp, and that's why it comes with this plastic guard. And I keep the guard on when I'm not using it. You simply take it out of the guard and be really, really careful. This could be washed in your dishwasher. Actually, what I do at home, I put it back in its case and wash it in the dishwasher like this. It's perfectly fine. But over time, because of the high detergents, it can dull the blade. So hand washing is better, but be, please be really careful. All right, safety lecture over. I'm gonna take my garlic because it's small and I'm gonna chop it by itself first. And watch how quickly I have pulverized the, onion, uh, the garlic. Now I can add the onion, because the poor little garlic would get lost with all these big pieces of onion in there. That's why I do that in a second. And again. If you see a piece that hasn't quite chopped completely, just give it a little bit of a shake. Another couple of pulls. And as you see, we've got very, very finely chopped onion and garlic. So that is the first thing that we're going to dump into our dump recipe. So I'm gonna put that right in the base of the pressure cooker. Okay. That's one. Put the blade back inside just so you don't accidentally grab it when you don't mean to. The second thing I'm gonna do is add some lime juice. So I'm gonna use our zest and press gadget. This is great. The reason it's a zester is because it has this little attachment. And the skin of the citrus fruit is where most of the flavor is. That's where the oils are. And so you want to be able to get that without getting any of the white. The white is very bitter. So I don't know if you've ever used one of those types of zesting gadgets that you scrape on your countertop and then you end up chasing pieces of zest all over your kitchen. Watch this. I simply scrape the lime and you can see that it's taking off some of the skin as it's supposed to, but you don't see any falling on the counter because all of it is now contained inside here. How cool is that, right? So I'm gonna add some of my lemon zest, uh, my lime zest. Now we need to get to the juicing part. I'm gonna cut my lime. A little trick if you don't already know this, anytime you have to juice a lemon or a lime or an orange, just give it a roll on the countertop and that helps to break up those little pockets of juice so that when you cut it and juice it, you'll get a lot more yield. And the way you use our zest and press, now you see that the opening here is concave, so you think you would put the fruit like this. It's exactly backwards. You follow this as your guide. So you put the lime in like this, now it's kind of like the Grand Tetons, and you give it a squeeze, and look at all the juice that has come out of that little half of a lime. And I'm not using brute force to do it, and 
I have a completely squoze out lime. I'm going to use the other half in a few minutes. Now I need some beans to go in my chili. So I'm going to use our can opener, which unlike a standard can opener, you don't come in from the side, you come in from the top. And then you close the handle, and when you're able to lift the can like that, then you know you've made contact. And you'll simply turn this until you either hear a click or until it becomes really easy to turn. Open the handle, and then you use the little grip here, close it again, and the top comes right off. And look, no sharp edges, because this did not cut the can, it actually unsealed it. So that's a really good safety feature. It's also a lot cleaner. And I'm gonna take the beans and drain them, because I don't really know what the bean fluid is that they were packed in, so I always drain the beans. And to save some time, I've already got some that have been drained, so I'm gonna simply add that. That's our next dump in our dump recipe. And just in the interest of time, I've also already opened a can of diced tomatoes. I like using fire roasted diced tomatoes because people that know me know I'm Mr. Flavor. And anytime I can get more flavor into something, I'm going to. And the fire roasted tomatoes just have that nice kind of a smoky taste, which really does well in a Southwest chili. So I'm gonna add the tomatoes, which I didn't drain because I want that liquid. Anytime you're cooking in the pressure cooker, you definitely need to have liquid because otherwise everything will just sort of fossilize and we don't want that to happen. All right, the next thing I'm gonna dump in is my turkey. And I've got a pound of ground turkey. You can choose fat or lean percentage to your preference, but I'm gonna just simply add that right in as is. And then I'm gonna season it. And I'm gonna use my own blend of Southwest seasoning so I've got some cumin, some ground cumin. I'm gonna add that. Some chili powder. Some chipotle powder, because I like a little bit of heat. And if you don't have chipotle powder or can't find it at your local market, you can also buy the um, bottled, like that famous hot sauce brand. They also make a version with chipotle. And by the way, if you didn't know what a chipotle is, a chipotle pepper is a jalapeno that grew up. So all peppers start off green, and we're used to seeing green jalapenos, but when a chipotle happens, that green jalapeno has turned red, and then those are dried and smoked, and that's why they've got more heat, because it concentrates all the oils, and the smokiness comes from them having smoked the peppers. Now you know something you didn't know before. And the last thing I'm gonna add is a little bit of oregano. And if you're ever using dried herbs, doesn't matter what kind they are, whether it's oregano or basil or anything, you always want to crush the herbs first because the oils in the drying process all get drawn up into the herb. And yes, you can flavor with it right out of the jar or the bottle, but if you crush the herbs first, it's 10 times more powerful. And I just like, again, I'm Mr. Flavor, so I like to get extra flavor for my buck. So I'm gonna just crush up my oregano. And now I need a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. And now I'm just gonna mix everything together just to break that turkey up a little bit because I don't wanna have a giant turkey burger when I'm finished. The point is that we're making chili here. And I also want to get all of those seasonings evenly distributed. All right, that's it for this. So now I'm going to close up the pressure cooker. And this is important. There's an arrow on the cover and there's a matching arrow on the handle. So you simply line up your arrows and then give it a clockwise turn. Now it's closed. But we're not done because the, another safety feature is this locking handle. So you simply press down, I like to say lock and load, and now we're ready to go right into the microwave for 25 minutes and we'll have chili. Okay, there's the magic sound. Our chili is now done after 25 minutes. Notice that it's completely cool to the touch. I don't need pot holders. And what I really want you to pay attention to is that our pressure indicator valve is up. And that means don't touch me, don't try to open me, it wouldn't let you anyway. But you know that now we have to wait for it to depressurize. So 10, 15 minutes, 
and then the indicator will drop and that means that it's then safe to open and we can have some chili. Okay, while we're waiting for the pressure to drop on the pressure cooker, I'm gonna chop up some fresh cilantro for garnish. So I've got some already washed and dried cilantro and I'm gonna use our chop and prep and whenever you're chopping your fresh herbs, always dry them thoroughly because otherwise they'll tend to turn into paste and I don't want paste. So I'm just gonna take some of my cilantro. Now I know cilantro is a very subjective thing and there's no in between on cilantro. People either love it or they hate it. Those that hate it think it tastes like soap. Don't know why. But I love it and so I tend to be rather generous. So I'm gonna chop a lot, because I can. And I'm simply going to put it in, and with just a few quick pulls, I now have nicely chopped cilantro. There's one little stubborn leaf in there that's trying to escape, but there is no escape. So now I've got my cilantro chopped, and it'll be ready when the chili has depressurized. Okay, I think our pressure has released. Let's take a look. Yes, notice that the indicator has dropped, so that means that it's now safe to open the uh, pressure cooker. So I'm gonna bring it over because we're not quite done yet. And to open the pressure cooker, you have to unlock the safety handle and then give it a counterclockwise turn. And always, whether it's a pot on your stove or anything that's hot, always lift the cover away from you unless you want a very sudden and unexpected hot steam facial. Mmm, that smells good. Okay, I'm going to give it a stir just to break up any pieces of the turkey that were larger than I had expected. And now, I'm gonna add the juice of the other half of our lime. Remember, you'd think it goes this way, but it doesn't, it goes this way. Give it a squeeze. Now I'm gonna add my cilantro. I'm gonna save a little bit to garnish when I do the finished bowl. And now a little bit of salt, because that turkey needs some salt and some pepper. Give it one more good stir. All right, now we are ready to serve this. So I'm gonna take a bowl and a nice ladle and serve up some of this delicious Southwest Turkey Chili. I can smell the smokiness of the chipotle and also the uh, fire roasted tomatoes. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna do, just give it a little bit more cilantro to make it purdy. And I hope you enjoyed this recipe.